Hello Australia, coming up on episode 769 today, Alexander Sacosta is in, covering entertainment as always. Roadmap to Health, we're talking about how do you deal with Christmas, it's coming up very soon with Dr Jenny Brockus and Nisha. Talking movies, Alexander's filling in for Paul Elwin today, so we've got all the latest movies for you. Talking communications with that expert, Dr Paula Smith, she'll be here today. And finally, the Bitchin team are here, Ted Bull, Demelza Leonard and Jen Merrigan. Hope you can stick around, we've also got live music by Hayley Redditch. So it's a big show. Stick around. 769 starts now. It's showtime on the couch. Yeah, it's showtime on the couch. You can see it from your house. You can watch it from your house. It's showtime on the couch. Hello Australia, welcome to our second last show for the year. I hope you can stick around for the next hour. And can I say welcome to our people in Melbourne, our viewers in Melbourne, in Adelaide and in Queensland who watch us on all the various channels around there. Thank you to all your uh, emails and requests as well and all your feedback as well. And thank you to all our fantastic viewers on the Foxtel network as well. Uh, where else but on Foxtel can you see the couch every week on a Sunday night? And. Uh, I think we'll get on with the show now. Let me welcome our first uh, presenter on the couch. He's been with us for a few years now. Alexander Sacosta, welcome back. You're talking entertainment today. Always. I love it. I'm Lots of with things it, been happening. I yes. Mean, and Matthew Perry. What starting a sad on a loss. very sad note. So we've lost the first of the Friends cast. Uh, we mm. have lost Matthew Perry. Very young. Uh, obviously, Friends an iconic show. Everyone knows it. It's still very popular in reruns. So it's not that it's kind of faded into yep. the ether in any means. But yeah, devastating loss. Now his funeral was just a few what, days ago. Just recently, ago. all the cast did reunite for the funeral. There, we can see the yeah. iconic. Oh, everything about that. That show was iconic. Did you like Friends? I mean, are I, you are you an original viewer? Because no. you're not young enough to. See, I didn't watch yeah. it originally, but I did after it had ended. Do the whole on DVDs. Go the all. The I way never through. forget the song. That's oh, it's iconic, well, right? By the Rembrandts. Yeah, I, I loved it. And Everything about that look, show. I must admit the humour wasn't my type mm. when it first ran and I had the opportunity to watch it. But I do get that people love it. Yeah. All the reruns, you get it's as if it's a brand new show every time it reruns. Yeah, and it's very comforting to watch that show. And there's obviously the last post he did on his Instagram mm. there, which is inside the hot tub, and that's unfortunately now where he was. They still don't know what his cause of death was. Are they it saying he's drowning, yeah. but they haven't linked it they as to how. So obviously it takes time for the whole toxicology and all those things to go through and naturally the entertainment media is all over it constantly. Mm putting updates about it, trying to give that privacy to the family. At a, it's Yeah, it's awful. And you yeah. start to see that life, it happens. All these people you used to watch on TV of your era now start to vanish. Now, Channel 10 are doing incredible things next year. I don't like saying it, but they've got some great shows coming in. They're, they're bringing in... Uh, the suitcase, the one that used to be on Channel 7. What's that ah, called? Deal or No Deal. Deal or No Deal with Grant Denyer. Oh, he'll be good. Yeah, they've <laughs> got him back. And, and they've also got a, a whole heap of new shows. Yes. But Robert Irwin is replacing our good yes. doctor. Very interesting. So on obviously, the jungle. Dr Chris Brown has jumped over to 7. So mm. now Robert Irwin has jumped into his shoes there on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me I Out of Here. I did see him on the project. And I must admit, look, he looks like he's playing the part. He wants to be he a presenter. He looks like a Chris Brown himself, actually. Very similar face and hair. Do you, do you reckon, I mean, between you... You and me, we could probably say yeah. this, being so hot as we are. Yeah, well, um, yeah. Go do you on. reckon they picked him because they wanted someone eye candy? For a bit of eye candy that. for the young people. Yeah, I, because Doctor. Wait, um, Fred, are you implying that in television they only put attractive people well, on? This I've is never, madness. I've never, never heard that ever before. I agree with you. When would we ever put attractive people? Which camera am I on? Yeah. Uh, uh, but it is interesting because he's got a fantastic. He did the weather for a while at Channel Seven, and yeah. obviously uh, Ten thought he was great. Yeah. Um, well, he's very lucky. Four hundred and thirty thousand dollars for six weeks. Pretty that's a lot good. of. Uh, that's a lot of zoo money. That's a lot. And look, of zoo congratulations money. to him because he would have a contract for so many years. Yes. And uh, let the jungles being recorded early next year. I mean, it year. makes more sense actually because I mean, the Bondi vet in the jungle seems a yep. bit of a stretch, but at least he actually works with animals. I think in so. A more wildlife. Sense. And there's some rumours <laughs> that he sort of changed the production of the yes, show. Yes, he made it so no more of endangered species will be used for those eating challenges. So yep. a bit of a good angle It'll be interesting as well. to see how it all works out. I'll be curious. Out. Curious so, to see this dynamic. See if look, we've got I'd, a new, new comedic couple maybe. I think maybe. so. I think it's going to be wonderful. And like I said, there's lots 
lots of in the upfronts for Channel 10. They've got some great shows. Miguel, of course, of from course, the living room. Back to that voting show. What is well, it? Ready, steady, cook. Yeah, ready, steady, cook. I think he'll be wonderful. I you just need translation at the bottom, but <sighs> he could make that work and be yes, very humorous. All the energy. So I'm glad Ten are bringing Channel back some 10, local production. On the way back. Who knows? Now, Celine Dion. So Celine Dion has actually kind of been away from the public for quite mm. a while now, when she was diagnosed with stiff person syndrome. So it's this rare progressive neurological disorder that causes your muscles in your arms, legs and everything to basically you wow. become extremely unable to move. And obviously she's a performer, so that goes against everything she can do. This is her first public appearance in four years Oh, there. good honour. So good that honor. was at an NHL game in Las Vegas where she actually lives, because that's where she did her show, her residency. She's 55 years old, another person very she's young. She's still and very young. Such a rare condition, one in a million people, literally. Oh, we wish her all condition. the best and on yeah. her comeback as well, because she's an amazing singer as oh. well. They're iconic. Speaking of icons, there's mm -hmm. one. Obviously, she went through the tragic loss of her husband as well in 2016. So yep. it's been a bit hard run for well Celine Dion. Well done, Celine for coming back. And uh, good luck is all we can say. What's happening with Daisy Ridley? Something a bit Western Australia. So well, a lot of us will know Daisy Ridley from the Star Wars movies. Uh, but she's actually going to be here in Western Australia filming a film. So she's 31 years old and she's filming a survival thriller called What's We called? Bury the Dead. We Bury the Dead. There so it's go. a movie, a feature so film. a scene from... The Star Wars, which uh, was some about the controversial <laughs> trilogy, yep. not as popular as the pre previous two. Now, but are I you think telling me she's, she's a Perth actress? No, no, no she's oh, going to be here. She's going to be here. They're shooting um, down south. Okay. Uh, so that'll be oh, exciting. Oh, 31 year old actress. She's quite a young actress as Very well. Very young so. still. She's done a lot though. Like that put her on the map, Star Wars. So. How cool, though, that we get... It feels like we had Nicolas Cage. Now we've got Daisy Ridley. We and, get our little Hollywood moments I am here surprised that you didn't cover Troy Sivan. He's, uh, Is he back? Yes, he's what? living... Uh, for those people who don't know, Troy Sivan was a student here at Side, where we do our show. That's right. Uh, through the Wolverine days. Yes, he was in Wolverine. He we had him on Wolverine. the couch. He, he was with um, the famous... Uh, presenter that's over there on the late show uh, is it Fallon? James Corden, Jimmy Fallon one of those uh, yeah. famous people, not as good as us but basically <laughs> he was on that show and he's an amazing uh, personality, Singer, I have to say he's everything. grown up, yeah. he told uh, the, the interviewer that he started on television when he was 8 here in Perth and I couldn't work out if it was us or whether it was telethon I think yes. it, they showed the telethon footage yes. but he's now moved to Melbourne, he's found himself a house he's renovated it uh, he's living with a lady that it might be his producer or best oh, friend. How creative. And they've moved to Melbourne. He said he went back to Melbourne during COVID. Yes. He renovated this place. He said, I can't leave. I love it too much. So he's now based in Melbourne but flies back to America. A lot of Australian actors are doing that. That's what the Hemsworths well, did as yeah, well. They exactly. kind of leave that LA lifestyle and just go for projects. And wasn't it Matt, is it Matt Bourne? The, Matt that, Damon. Matt Jamie, Damon, yeah. sorry. Yeah, he was um, over here as well. He was over property. here at the races a couple yes, of weeks he ago. Was. So, mm, what? Interesting. Interesting Hollywood. times. And Kate Walsh. She's oh, well, she's, another, a, she's she, a local now. I saw her at Mary Poppins. Well, there you go. See? Did you really? <laughs> yes, Did you go saw, up to her? I should have. See, this is where I was just like, how do I make that introduction happen? Do I just like trip in front of her? <laughs> Alec, you, uh, Alexander, you were a part of Telethon as well. How did I that was, all go? 77 oh, million, was that right? Just a casual 77 million, right? A fantastic result, the highest we've ever that raised. That was just Alexander yeah. giving up his pay for the week. Yeah, I'm very generous. No, it was just fantastic to see, as usual. Uh, you go into that weekend, so much planning goes into yep. it. And then it's all worth it to see all those well, people come together for such a good cause. All I can say is well done. Now, what's hot or not today? Hot or not? Do you know what? Musicals, I got another one is coming to Perth and mm. Juliet. And it's doing its premiere on, uh, I think, New Year's Eve. So it's kind of like one of those rock and roll uh, pop musicals mm. and uh, looking forward to it, retelling of the classic Shakespearean elements. So The Crown. So that's hot again. Musicals. Perth is blowing awesome. up for and musicals. And there's a Tina Turner, Tina Turner's one coming, coming next year. And there's a, a few others. Another Elvis one. There's chorus Chicago. Line? Yes, um, Chicago. I don't know what's happened, but I'm loving it. So well, hot musicals. Still stick hot. around because you're covering movies today as well. I'm so excited. Alexander Sacosta, thank you for being on the couch today. Oh, we'll talk to you a bit later on with I'll movies. I'll just sit here. <laughs> if you don't mind, if you do it nice and quietly, it would be good. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, lovely lady centre stage is not going to be very quiet today is, of course, Hayley Reddit. She's only 15 years old, performing for the first time on our show here on the couch. She's singing a song called The Best Song Ever, of course, One Direction classic. Here she is. Stole it 
like she already owned it I said, can you give it back to me? She said, never in your wildest dreams And we danced all night to the best song ever heard We knew every line, now I can't remember how it goes But I know that I won't forget her Cause we danced all night To the best song ever Going oh, going yeah, yeah, yeah Goes oh Said her name was Georgia Rose Oh, and her daddy was a dentist Said I had a dirty mouth Oh, but she kissed me like she meant it I said, can I take you home with me? She said, never in your wildest dreams And we danced all night To the best song ever heard We knew every line Now I can't I won't forget her Cause we danced all night To the best song ever It went no oh, It went yeah, yeah, yeah It goes oh You know, I know, you know I remember you And I know, you know, I know you Remember me and you song ever heard we knew every line now i can't remember how it goes but i know that i won't forget her cause we danced all night to the best song ever it went no oh, it went yeah 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 goes so There you go. That is, of course, Hayley Redditch, and we'll have her at the end of the show. Only 15 years old. What a wonderful talent. And can I say, over the years, 23 years, we've had music acts on this show, and uh, there's been thousands of them. And uh, thank you for coming on the show today, and uh, we'll see you at the end of the show, Hayley. Time now to talk to Nisha. She's got another roadmap to health with Dr Jenny, talking about Christmas and more. Over to you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Fred. Yes, Dr Jenny Brockus, welcome back to the couch. Thanks so much, Nisha. It's lovely to be talking with you. Yeah, how have you been? Really good. I've been wearing a different hat recently. Mm -hmm. Oh, literal, has a hat. Has a hat. <laughs> yeah, do you like it? Yes, I do really it's like it. It's rather fetching. I like the purple on it too. Yeah, yes. and so Coast Track is a great organisation and you are the ambassador. I was one of the ambassadors. There's mm -hmm. many ambassadors. Okay, wonderful. But um, Coast Track is uh, run by an amazing woman over in Sydney mm -hmm. and she runs charity walks for women mm -hmm. around the country raising much needed funds for worthy causes and this year the worthy cause was the heart foundation mm -hmm. for women's heart health mm -hmm. and so i signed up on the dotted line and agreed i would walk 20 kilometers 20 kilometers that was a short walk <laughs> that was a that was short, short walk. walk and how long did that take you it took me well it took our team just <laughs> over five hours wow that's a, that's yeah. a bit of walking but it was a bit of walking. fantastic cause yes. and love the flexibility of kind of focusing in on different health topics yes. for and women. That's, that's yeah. great because she started off um, supporting the Fred Hollows Foundation for Eyes mm -hmm. and then she went to Beyond Blue which is you know, yes. mental health and now we've moved on to the women's hearts. Mm. So, so women's hearts, um, obviously men and women both have hearts but they're yes, different. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> Stacey, yep. obviously, apologies. Yep. Um, but there's, there's differences in signs and symptoms yes. um, for heart disease. And yes. I can't believe, just talking off air to you, how different some of those mm. are. So, mm. so why is it so important to focus in on women versus men? 
because uh, as women, we tend to put things off if we don't think it's important or urgent. Mm -hmm. And we're not very good at recognising that if we're not feeling quite right and we're mm -hmm. feeling short of breath or very tired mm -hmm. more than usual, mm -hmm. that it may be worthwhile just getting it checked up because yeah. too many women don't get checked mm -hmm. up. So they turn up late, they might be get misdiagnosed in hospital too, mm -hmm. so they don't get the ideal treatment. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the scary thing is that more women die of heart disease here in Australia than from breast cancer each year. Wow. And I think we need to really mm. wake up to the fact that, you know, we need to really look after our hearts better. Mm. Absolutely. And, you mm. know, prevention is obviously better than cure a lot Definitely. of the time. So, Definitely. And going for a big walk, yeah. is, of course, is very good for your heart. Yeah. And um, <laughs> how much did you raise this year in Western oh. Australia? It was phenomenal. I mean, I had no idea what to expect. Um, they set a target mm -hmm. and uh, we raised $564,000 at last count, which that I think is, is so just good. amazing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that was a walk done by 1,100 women yes. and a few men. Mm -hmm. And okay. I just think that's an amazing result. Mm -hmm. So everybody put so much effort into it. And you could feel it on the day. Mm. You know when you go and do something that feels good because you're doing something that's yeah. for somebody else? Yeah. But the whole vibe mm. was wonderful. So we had 1,100 very happy women, <laughs> lots of sponsors, <laughs> lots of volunteers. Mm. We had a couple of paramedics, of course, along the Fantastic. way as well. <laughs> Prevention is better than yeah, cure. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but it was just a fantastic day out. Yeah. Beautiful scenery. We had humpback whales oh. putting on a floor show for us out in the ocean. Mm. So it was just beautiful. Hey, Jenny, Dr. Jenny, a um, question for you. Yes. You raised how much in one day? $564,000. Right? Am I hearing correctly? Well you done. Are. But since you did so well, why don't you just do it every day? Can you imagine how much money? <laughs> I reckon Dr. Jenny might do it seven days a week for a month. Yeah. I don't think my feet would take it. But anyway. <laughs> or can I say your heart? Or my heart. Yeah, that's very up. true. But congratulations. Very true. Yeah. Well you. done to the whole 1,100 mm. uh, women that have yeah, taken that was part. Phenomenal. And will they Just, do it again next year? Oh, yeah. There are five walks each year. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So the next one's mm -hmm. Canberra. In Beautiful. March 2024. Well so if done. you want to come and join yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're going to walk around traveling. Lake Burley Griffin. Yes. Oh, beautiful. And so, yeah, different environment. Different that, environment. That, that is phenomenal. And you're always doing great things, Dr. Jenny. <laughs> so you also have your, your um, podcast. You also have your online newsletter as well, yes. which is fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Um, one topic that we usually talk about this time of the year too is how we manage our stress before Christmas because um. it is a very busy time. <laughs> so I don't want to put you on the spot, but it'd be great to get some practical <laughs> tips. Yeah, yeah she's Showing now, my hat now. Changing her hat. moving to the stress before Christmas hat. Yes. Such a diverse and, you know, talented lady, Dr. Jenny Ruggers. <laughs> it, is, it is a very strange time of year in mm. some ways. It was a lovely time of year um, because, you know, everybody's excited about mm. Christmas for so many good reasons. Yeah. But it's also a time of year which I think many people just sort of crawl to the end of mm. because they're just so tired. Mm -hmm. And so many people this year especially, mm. I mean, we lived through COVID and mm. we were tired <laughs> and then we sort of came out of COVID and we were still tired <laughs> and we're still really, really tired. Mm. So many people are exhausted exhausted and I think it's because we still really haven't really recovered from the COVID mm -hmm. thing um, and there's a lot of other stuff going on around the world yeah, um, not very good stuff it's very mm. worrying I know mm. a lot of people are very stressed about what's going on elsewhere yeah. um, and you can't get away from it because it's on the news and you know if I see one more news segment which says um, please be aware there might be some distressing graphics. I'm asking, mm. why are you showing, showing this? And, yes, because it is distressing yeah. and it just adds to that stress mm. that we are exhibiting because yeah. we can't do anything about it. We yes. just worry. And it, it is part of what's in your circle of control, right? Absolutely. And there's macro stuff going on yeah. with um, different countries. It's challenging. Whole yes. is a sum of its parts. Yes. So we can't help but yeah. really feel, right? Yeah. So what are some sort of strategies that you find are useful for people when they get to this this stage? Because I, I totally associate we're all kind of crawling to the end, <laughs> hoping for November to be over. What are yeah. some things we can do to try and stay, stay I think I think sane? this year especially, it's about showing ourselves a little bit of kindness and self-compassion mm -hmm. and lowering expectations. Okay. Let's yes. do less yes. to have more. Yes. So um, instead of having to rush mm. off and buy presents for everybody, because mm. that's what you always do, maybe you buy each person gets one present from the rest of the family or whatever. Mm. So that's going to help economically too. 
um, spreads the load a bit. And maybe you know, just really ask, well, what do I want to get out of Christmas? Is it about spending time with the family? Or is it about sort of tying myself to the, the cooker and just slaving away <laughs> for a week trying to cook enough food for everybody? Yeah. I think we just need to revise what we really want, what's most important to us, mm. how we can manage things, and mm. definitely what is in our control. Mm. Because I think if we have that sense of control, I can do this, and I don't want to do that, mm. that automatically reduces some of the stress that we're feeling. I think so. Clear, mm. clear intentions are very helpful, right? Very yeah. much so, yes. Absolutely. Well, Dr Jenny, would love to have you on for longer, but we need to wind <laughs> up the segment. We're looking forward to having you on the couch in 2024 as well. Um, where do we find out more about you? You can find out more about me at drjennybrockes.com. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, drjennybrockes.com um, and, of course, on thecouch.com.au as well. Um, as well, rather. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you so much. And uh, I'm already winding down for the year. <laughs> but for now, it's back to you, Fred. <laughs> yes, yes. You can tell Nisha wants to get to the end of the year. I reckon Dr Jenny should take you out on one of those runs with her. I reckon a week would be wonderful. A good week? Yeah, okay, we I can think do that. so. Yeah. I've got lots of energy. Good. <laughs> clearly, <laughs> clearly. It. Well done. Thank you to Dr. Jenny and thank you to Nisha. <laughs> and and uh, don't eat too much over the Christmas period as well. It's something we always do. Thank you very much. We'll take a break. Uh, coming up after the break, Alexander Sacosta is back talking movies. Join us after the break. Welcome back to The Couch. Always nice to have your company. Thanks for joining us. We have got Alexander Sacosta back. I told you he would be back. Now, Alexander, you really do know movies because you're at every single preview here in Perth, whether it's at events, Hoyts, or any of the cinemas. Um, you've learned a lot about movies, haven't you? I have learned so much, Fred, by attending all these movies and just watching movies I wouldn't normally watch as well. So, And you normally interview people at yes, the cinema. Yes, get their opinions. And, and you put it up online and, yes, and the yes, cinema loves 100%. it, which is great. Now, today I thought, if you don't mind, could get, getting you to fill in for Paul Happy Elwin, who's to. away. Happy to. Um, so we've got, what, six movies to look yes, at? Yes, lots of stuff to look forward to. Only one of these films is actually out now, so mm. people can go and watch it, but lots of movies coming out, so it's going to be quite a summer of movies. Fantastic. Well, let's get straight into it. Brand Bollywood Down Under. Tell us what All that right, one's so about. so Fred, this one is out now already, so spanning from 1897 to 2023, Brand Bollywood Down Under is the first comprehensive international documentary which narrates the birth and growth of Bollywoodization. So we've got Hollywood, but the bigger industry is actually Bollywood. They make so India. many films. You can see them there. Beautiful, colourful it's beautiful. films. It's narrated by Teresa Lim and it has some of Bollywood's big stars like Fardeen Faroz Khan as well as Anpuam Khir and Mike Khan as well. So it goes into the artistry, the kind of organised chaos. The beauty of Bollywood films is they do move very quickly from these yeah. high-paced action scenes straight bright. into a dance sequence. I agree. And it's just, uh, if you've seen some really good Bollywood films, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So that's out in cinemas now. People Fantastic. can go and check that Looks one out. You know, Bollywood films are exciting they're fun, they make you laugh yeah. and, and they're just a, a great a thing to watch just for a couple of hours oh now. Gosh, I can't wait to see that one. 100%. Master Gardener. So what? this is out on Thursday the 7th of December. It has premiered at a few film festivals already but has not had a wider release. Mm. So this is a 2022 film. It is an American crime thriller film yeah. written by Paul Schrader and it stars Australian Joel Edgerton there is and that. it's also got Sigourney Weaver who we obviously know from Alien and all those yes. fantastic sci-fi films as well as Quintessa Swindle. So this is a very interesting interesting film if anyone's seen any of the ones that uh the writer's written before paul schrader uh it's like a he's a the character joel edgerton plays is a horticulturalist and he's devoted to attending the grounds of this beautiful estate that's owned by the wealthy dowager which is sigourney weaver mm -hmm. and then her troubled great niece is quintessa swindle and the Sort of, it's about race, it's about class, it's about love. It's a very, it's not what you'd expect as people who have seen those uh, films before. So Paul's known for uh, working with Martin Scorsese a lot as well. He helped write Taxi Driver. And I hear I thought I thought it was a remake of Garden Gurus. No, with Trevor unfortunately Cochran. not. Master Gardener. <laughs> that's our Thursday, the seventh of December. Yes. If you're hanging out for that one. Yes. Now, more art house. Wonka. Wonka. Now, this is a big one. A lot of people are looking forward to this one. We've mm. seen Willy Wonka on the screen many times. We had Gene Wilder. It's then been we remade had so many Johnny times. Johnny Depp. 
And now we have the actor who, of the moment, Timothy Chalamet. Who would Timothy be your favourite? Who, would, who I, was your favourite? I haven't seen this one, but I do feel like Timothy Chalamet is perfectly okay. cast. Because I think it. he's got the, the kind of whimsy about him. Tim Burton style is very different to this. I think this is going to capture that humour element. And he's also going to capture the younger viewers because I think even Johnny Depp was a bit older at the time. So this is a musical fantasy film directed by Paul King and it does follow Roald Dahl's famous character Willy Wonka in his early years as Mm. he kind of builds up. It's got some big names attached to it as well. You've got Hugh Grant, Oscar winner Olivia Colman. It even has Rowan Atkinson uh, back in the front. Lots of comedians as well with Matt Lucas and Keegan-Michael Key as well. That's Wonka. It's out on Thursday the 14th of December. Check it out at your local cinema. Buy your tickets as soon as they come out. That's going to be a popular one, I think. I think so. Leading up to Christmas. There it is. That's all the uh, the latest there. And uh, let's move straight to the next movie, of course. Anyone but you. The rom-coms. There's always a rom-com that comes out on, over summer. And now we've got uh, another American romantic comedy directed by Will Gluck from a, ski, uh, a screenplay he wrote with Alana Walpert. It stars Sidney Sweeney and Glenn Powell as well as Alexandra Shipp. So people might recognise Glenn Powell. He was in the most recent Top Gun Mavericks. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's filmed in Sydney, so Australian location. Oh, filmed here. And it's about B and Ben who look like the perfect couple, but after an amazing first date, something happens that turns their fiery hot attraction ice cold. Then they find themselves thrust together and have to pretend that they're in a relationship. So naturally, as with all rom-coms, hijinks ensue. <laughs> so where did they, do you know where they filmed it? It was in Sydney. Yeah, just yeah, in just Sydney itself. Yeah, just across all those locations. The colour is amazing, you see it's oh Australia. Gosh. But uh, look, I'm looking forward to that oh, one. There's I the Sydney Opera House. <laughs> that's out on the 26th of December, so Boxing Day. Yes, a nice Boxing Day film, which hopefully it'll be hot, so a perfect one to go and see. There you go, I think all the teenagers will love that one. All Let's all look at it. the next one, Aquaman, The Lost Kingdom. The final of the DC expanded universe. So as you know, oh, okay. James Gunn is taking over that film franchise, so it's no longer going to be featuring all these actors. Gal Gadot is one who really? is going to make a change. This is it. So this is the final one in that sequence. It's got Jason Momoa returning for the final time as Aquaman. Uh, you've also got Patrick Wilson, Amber Heard in her second appearance, and you've also got Nicole Kidman who plays Aquaman's mum in this film as well. So Black Manta is back uh, from the first film. Uh, he's using the power of the mythic trident to unleash an ancient and malevolent force, as you do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, he has to once again save Atlantis while uh, reteaming with his brother as well, Orm, who was the former king of Atlantis before Arthur Curry, Aquaman took over. The classic big scale, big action, everything you look for in these superhero films, although I do feel like we are in a downward trend with the superhero films. A lot of misses this year when yeah. it comes to superhero films, so fingers crossed this will be just as good as the first Aquaman, which was actually fantastic. Did you like Aquaman? I did. I thought that now, one was see, really I well made. I have never watched one of those Aquaman. Oh, you've got to watch the I don't first know why I haven't, good. but it, look, it does look quite interesting. They were really so well I'm made. I'm looking forward to seeing that. 26th of December as well, that's yes, Boxing Day. Boxing Day one. And this one's about the car that you drive, Ferrari. Yes. Well, I thought better just throw it in. Uh, the car of the people, as I call it the Ferrari uh, it comes out this is for January the 4th of January this one comes out and yep. it is based off the biography Enzo Ferrari the man mm-hmm. the cars the races the machine which was written by motorsport journalist Brock Yates so this is set during the summer of 1957 when bankruptcy looms over the company and it's always fascinating because you think of these big companies as never yeah. having had kind of these hard times because you've always seen them as so iconic and this one really explores that kind of fast-paced life of the creator we've got Adam Driver as Enzo Ferrari Penelope Cruz who seems to play a lot of Italians Correct. as Laura Ferrari and Shailene Woodley as Lina Lardi. So, obviously filmed across the beauty of Italy, so you can't go wrong with that setting. And, uh, and if you love your cars. Ferrari, you're going to love this movie. It's Ferrari, as you said, 4th of January. It comes out. Please support it. Go and have a look for it straight after Christmas, which is good as well. So lots of films to look forward to. Now, we also do a thing called the Top 5 Movies. I have so seen this. We yes. have got them on screen. We'll read them out, if you can, for us, Alexander. 100%. From 5 to f- uh, 1. Starting with number five, The Creator. In number four, The Exorcist Believer. Number three, Leo. Number two, Tay Tay, Taylor Swift, The Eras Tour. Go and see it, fantastic. Yep. And number one, Killers of the Flower Moon. Yes, with Leonardo now, DiCaprio. I must admit, did you see The Exorcist? I did. I didn't like it. It wasn't as good as the first one. Yeah, I don't know what but it, it is. Been, I think what, 50 I think years? <laughs> the political correctness is getting to me. Uh, it was almost unusual that they had two different children. Yeah, uh, they tried children. to double it up and make it thing, but it lacked. It lacked that. It, it didn't lacked. have the Linda Blair factor, even well, though she end, was in it. Oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> 
<laughs> but we don't tell you where uh, in the end. Where at the in end. the trailer, in yeah. the trailer. But no, look, it's, it's very interesting. Lots of movies coming up. We're going to watch a, a whole heap of movies this yes. week, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, Thanksgiving for yes, us here nice in horror Perth. film. Uh, what else is coming out this we've week? We've got uh, Napoleon, Napoleon coming out in a few weeks, and, and we've also got that uh, the cat movie, the cat movie, which is a horror rom rom com. Yep. You know why not mix every genre together? Lots it's coming 2023. up. 2023 end on a bang. Thank you very much. You've done a great job. Uh, thank you, as always, to a Alexander pleasure. Sacosta. Have you got a busy week working uh, at Channel 7? Every day is a busy week. Every well, day is a busy week. Does that make sense? It yes. does. Every day is a busy week. <laughs> every week is a busy day. Oh, what a beautiful quote. Thank you very much. <laughs> Alexander Sacosta, thank you for being with us. We'll take a break on the couch. We're back with more of the couch right after this. And uh, we'll see you then. Welcome back to The Couch. Always nice to have our next uh, special guest in the studio. They, they've been playing handsy pansy <laughs> sitting on the couch, these professional women that we've got here. Uh, because it is the end of the year, we thought we'd be making a, a little bit of a segment about making end of year speeches. If you have to make one, now is the time when Nisha and uh, Dr Paula Smith tell you how you should do it and how it works. Over to you, Nisha. Wonderful. Thank you, Fred. Yes, we have been doing uh, some hand exercises. That was, there was a, uh, a purpose to that. We'll talk about that later. But welcome, Dr Paula. Thank you. Yeah, I cannot believe it's the end of the year. I know, this festive time, right? So, oh, yeah. And this is when the uh, office parties are happening or even in smaller parties at home. Yeah, and the Christmas trees go up. Is your Christmas tree up? Not yet. Next week, I think, because yeah. I'd like to enjoy it. And I know Fred's putting his up very soon as well. Uh, He's inspired me. Yeah. Mine goes up on the first of November yeah. every year so I, yeah yeah every year mm. yeah and then I, I welcome all those comments about it's way too early but no, I still don't care Christmas they, Grinches they start selling things like what yeah. in October now yeah, so it's completely right. fine <laughs> and of course we have all the celebratory things happening so giving speeches is important and we know you're a communication mm. expert so we thought who better to talk to than you about what some tips are to deliver that knockout speech? Yes, absolutely. Now, last year, this time of the year, we talked about the appropriate behaviour yes. um, at an end-of-year <laughs> celebration or bosses behaving badly. <laughs> so I'll go back into my, uh, my lane now with powerful <laughs> presenting yeah. And, uh, yeah, and let's talk about that end-of-year Christmas mm. speech or the celebration speech at the end mm. of the year. <laughs> and hopefully I will be able to um, sort of uh, <laughs> give you a few tips or, you know, give your listeners a few yeah. tips about how to nail that speech at the end of the year. Excellent. So it's pretty nerve-wracking, right, if you get asked, let's say, in an office to be the, the speaker, whether you're the boss or you're a team member. Um, what are some of the things to reduce that anxiety mm -hmm. in terms of preparing for that? Yeah, look, well, most of the time uh, it is the CEO, the general manager, mm -hmm. the boss, the supervisor mm -hmm. who gets invited to do mm -hmm. the end-of-year celebration. Mm -hmm. So let's start off with a few tips. Mm -hmm. um, number one, and, uh, and I think I said this next year, but I definitely will say it again, is number one is do not drink and dribble, <laughs> which basically means <laughs> stay away from the alcohol. Mm -hmm. It is a celebration time, of mm. course. I have a few drinks, but after the speech, mm. um, for, for a couple of reasons. <laughs> uh, number one, so mm. alcohol dries your vocal cords as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. So you may not sound as smooth. Mm -hmm. But number two, sometimes after a couple of drinks, you may say some things mm. in a speech that you wouldn't necessarily say if you didn't have those drinks. Yeah. Yep. So it really lowers our inhibition. It does um, And we want our sultry tones, right? <laughs> we want people to remember what we're saying. For all the yeah. right reasons, yes. That's for all it. the right yes. reasons, yeah. <laughs> uh, so number two, absolutely, the preparation. The preparation is always evident. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've been at the receiving end of many end-of-year celebration mm -hmm. speeches where it's it's pretty um, evident that there's, there's been no preparation at all. Mm -hmm. And they've got up and just said, oh, you know, it's been a great year, hasn't it? And it <laughs> may not have been. So, uh, yeah, number two, prepare. I uh, segue into number three, mm -hmm. have a really clear message. Mm -hmm. So the clear message can be uh, something maybe that's been really good or something exciting mm -hmm. that's happened throughout the year or, or something they're looking mm -hmm. forward to in the future. Mm -hmm. So have that really clear message yeah. to say. However, keep it light. Uh, so yes. keep it light, add a bit of humour mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's not the time to talk about budgets or the, the recent redundancies. <laughs> right, okay, yes. <laughs> so yes. The, the lightness you know, <laughs> and, and joy has to be evident as well. 
it's, I like that. Some of the hallmarks of a good speech being that, you know, kind of a little bit about past, um, present, but the future. Yeah. Something to be hopeful for, right, as well. Yeah. Well, the end of year celebration is about celebrating the year that was, but mm. it's providing hope mm. for the future as well and to what everyone can look forward to. Excellent. Yeah. And I think one of the last ones is no one ever complained about their boss's speech being too short. So speak with brevity. Okay. <laughs> so speak with brevity. Don't make it too long. You know, it's everybody is just waiting to get on with their celebrations. Try to bring it in a little bit earlier for mm -hmm. the party. Don't wait to the end. Yes. So obviously you can enjoy those few drinks after the speech. That's good. So in a nutshell, keep it short, sharp, mm -hmm. add a little bit of humour, mm -hmm. keep it light, but add a few feel-good things into it as well. Get a couple of nice stories that have mm. happened throughout the year and you should be able to nail it every time. Mm. And of course it's what we say but it's also how we say it. So what are some of the, the physical things to be aware of? <laughs> well our language is not just about the words mm. we say, it's about our body language. Mm. So uh, open hands, the smiles, mm. the eye contact. So everything, the whole package okay. matters. Yes. So language is not just about the words that we're saying. So it's mm. got to be authentic and from the heart. And Not you, just tokenistic. Yeah, mm. beautiful. And do you mm. recommend maybe doing the speech in the mirror first or nope. just going out live? <laughs> <laughs> That's a myth. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, stop looking in the mirror to practice. But we do have to mm. practice while we're standing up. If we're doing mm. a presentation standing up, okay. practice standing up. Why our physicality that? matters as well. Yeah. Practice our grounding. Mm. And we're just practicing our hand movements and our gestures and, mm. and how it feels as well. Mm. And we want to practice without our notes. Okay. So sometimes people write their speeches and they try to be word perfect mm. and and it sounds like they're reading it, especially if they've rehearsed mm. it word for word. How do you feel about, you know, I remember from school when I did debating, I had little palm cards just yeah, with no. a few points. No, yeah, no. Not, no, not in It's not a debate, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even a depends that is. Yeah. No, we're not at school anymore. So uh, palm cards are great, you know, maybe yeah. at school. Although yeah. if I'm ever working with younger children, I go ditch the palm cards. Yeah, so it's so got to come from here. It's yeah. got to come yeah. from here. And it doesn't mean that we can't have notes, but it is about mm. the way we're using notes. And yes. palm cards are definitely more about the debating team at school, yeah. uh, but in a professional setting mm. as well. Yeah. And uh, the more preparation we do, mm. but we've got to speak from the heart mm. and uh, make it sound. It's like the first time you've ever had that conversation with the audience. Wonderful. And are there any tips for if you forget what you're going to say? Because I've heard a few things out there, like some people look down for a little while and they'll look up so they can kind of hold the space. Because we, we forget sometimes, even when we're very passionate, right? We might forget what we're saying or say the wrong thing. You're more likely to forget when you've rehearsed it word perfect. Because right. then if you forget a word or forget a sentence, it really throws you out. Mm. So the more it becomes conversational, if you do forget mm. something, you actually know your name. Mm. You know who these people are in front of you. Yes. You know round about what I you're going you to say. I hope you remember your name or you've had too many drinks before. <laughs> <laughs> so if you speak from the heart, yeah, it, uh, it, mm. you will have less chance of forgetting. Mm. Uh, but we sometimes forget to mm. honour space and yes. pausing as well. Yes. And sometimes that pause may seem like it's for 30 seconds, mm. but it's a very brief moment mm. for you to sort of, you know, start tapping back into that brain mm. and, uh, and don't be afraid of silence to gather your thoughts. Wonderful. Yeah. So many key <laughs> insights there. Dr Paula Smith, thank you so much. Um, what speeches are you delivering over Christmas? Oh, so many. <laughs> it's not Christmas yet. <laughs> so I've got a bit of a full diary. I'm emceeing a couple of conferences. I've got lots of presentations, you know, mm -hmm. coming up as well. Fantastic. So I'm more of the MC, you know, more than the uh, the Christmas um, speech with the team. Mm -hmm. And uh, But all the same principles. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter whether you're emceeing or hosting an event mm -hmm. or delivering any presentation. Mm -hmm. Some of these principles we share today will be the same. Beautiful. And you provide a lot of training, coaching um, for um, very senior leaders and individuals out there. Where do people find out more about you? <laughs> yes, at paulasmith.com.au. <laughs> Wonderful. We're looking forward to um, seeing you in our season in 2024. Hope you have a lovely Christmas. Yes, I hope you too. I hope everybody else here, you know, and of course your viewers out there have a wonderful Christmas. Thank you. I'm going to practice my speech. <laughs> it's funny. Excellent. Not in the mirror. <laughs> okay, no, not in the mirror. Just directly to Fred who gets sick of my voice. Um, so if you've missed anything at all, of course, you can go to thecouch.com.au. It's back to you now, Fred. Thank you very much, Nisha. <laughs> Thank you to Dr Paula Smith for being part of our show. We hope to have her back next year on the show. Quick question for you before we go to the break. Paula. Yes. You do a lot of speeches, you talk to a lot of people, you do a lot of coaching. Is it harder doing family speaking as a parent than what it is to talk to organisations? 
How much harder is it for someone like yourself? <laughs> uh, uh, so the way we influence yep. our family can be the same, same yep. principles. Yep. But our kids are sort of getting smarter and they sort of <laughs> see through us. And I think, um, Nisha and I have said before, our kids are now aware they've become a social experiment their whole life. So they're looking for the ways that I'm trying to influence them. So, but, you know, it's a bit like you can't coach family members as well. Exactly. So they, they see through it. So um, stick your to your organisational tips and uh, let your family be coached by somebody else. Thank you very much. You're Thanks welcome. for the advice and have a great <laughs> Christmas. And I'm going to take some of the advice from Paula. No more scripts. <laughs> no more palm cards. What's coming up after the break? Who knows? Know. Who cares? <laughs> it's bitching. Coming up after the break, uh, Ted... Jen, and of course, Demelza. Catch you after the break. I, I need those palm cards. Connect with the couch online through Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Welcome back to The Couch, time for Bitch, and let me introduce our panel today. We've got Ted Bull, we've got Demelza Leonard, and we've got Jen Merrigan. Welcome to all three of you, and welcome to The Couch. Lovely Ted, to be here, mate. Tell us, Ted, what's your story? Well, look, I, I know this is a bit hard to take. However, recently I required the public facilities. Mm. So I, I went in, and as a bloke, you tend to sort of look down when you're going, but my peripheral vision picked up. This bloke at the urinal, and in one hand he had his, and the other hand he had a telephone to his ear. Now, I did some research on this, Fred, and women, uh, and I discovered that the average length of time for a piddle is 21 seconds. Really? Now, if you need your phone for that 21 seconds, I mean, I ask you, and on top of that, I thought, now, how does he tidy himself up? What I mean, it's not. It's a two-hand job, as us blokes know, to get everything back to normal. It's a, you know, it is. And I, but there's an old poem that goes, "No matter how you skip and prance, the last few drops go down your pants." Mm. So you have to be really tidy. And I didn't stay to watch. Yes. I, I left the premises immediately because I thought this mate's going to be a mess by the time he finishes. And then further to this, further to this, did you know? I know, Jen, you do, that there are ten times more germs on a mobile phone yes. than on a toilet seat. Now, you may nod your head, but the mm. thing that worries me is whose job is it to do this research? If you go to a, yeah, at a dinner party and someone says, what do you do for a living? You say, oh, I check out toilet seats in public toilets. You know, I mean, some call it the phone room, some call it the throne room. However, mm. I don't think there's anyone amongst us who hasn't check their phone out sometime when they've been on the loo. Let, let's, uh, uh, let's ask Demelza, have you done this before? <laughs> I reckon Demelza does. A lot of people do get some messages when I might be <laughs> in the toilet. I'm a busy woman. I got to use Isn't my time. Isn't it funny? We, we live a life now where we're so naked without the phone. We, we feel like we're so attached. Yeah. And if we don't have it on... I, I left my phone in the car this morning and I felt that I was lost. Yeah, so really? Sonia went yeah. and got it for me out of the car. Mm. And I said, don't worry, you just take a photo. I don't know. But it's really weird if you leave it. Do you, have you ever left your phone in the car when I've been at work? Yeah. And I have to go down and get it. Oh, no yes. matter what, yeah. Because I feel, it's like taking leaving your watch. Mm -hmm. yeah. You just don't feel And right. you never know. You may need to go to the, to the dunny. And without mm. your phone, that would be a pointless exercise. Mm. What about you, Jen? As uh, Ted said, you'd know this, uh, this problem. Do you use your phone in the toilet? I don't. I don't. I, I, I am in, in a... A moment of really consciously <laughs> trying not to use my phone as much. It's just become, I find, you know, I know we're all on Facebook and everything, mm. but Facebook, I just, I, I, it's not healthy. No, it's, it's not, not healthy. healthy. And yes, it's a good form of communication and it has some benefits, but I'm really trying to restrict. It's really easy to pick up your phone yep. every hour and 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 scroll mm. through it. Yeah, and yeah. it's actually not healthy. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm making a conscious effort to put my phone down and ignore it for no, a while. Yeah. Great yeah. idea. I think that's what it is. I mean, look, everything can wait a couple of minutes. Go to the toilet, leave it in, in your car, or leave it in your bag, wherever it might be, in your pocket, and look at it later when you mm. get out And of also, it. women who tend to put phones in their back pocket, mm. so yeah. easy for that to fall out of your bag. Yeah. Yeah. Into the dummy. Yeah. Into I the think, dummy. though, it's yeah. not just the actual communication part of it, but it's now entertainment yes. as well. So gone are the days of reading the magazines. It's actually oh, yeah. now you're Look, scrolling I, and I seeing what's I had a friend that actually had the phone in their pocket and they bent over <gasps> uh, 
and basically fell in the in the toilet. And would you get take a phone out? But yeah, they had to. Oh. Yeah. Demelza, what's your story? So there's a landlord in Leeds mm. who has bougied up his uh, studio apartment. This to is one for try rent. And, this is one for rent to try and increase its uh, luxury appeal. Mm. Uh, and the way that he's done that is he's taken uh, Chanel shopping bags, Harrods shopping bags, mm. uh, and Harvey Nichols shopping bags, and strategically placed them around his uh, this particular so apartment to make it look good. The yeah. only issue is is that people have uncovered through looking at the floor plan, there's no bedroom to this apartment and there's actually no bed in the photos. Oh. But he has laid out a cookbook with some empty, empty wine glasses to make it look very entertaining and appealing. Yeah. Uh, he's been getting a lot of backlash for it, but at the same time, uh, the price is nine hundred and forty dollars a month for the apartment. Uh, for the apartment, uh, but they have reported him to the real so estate where, where agent. So where do people sleep then if there's no bedroom? Well, in the this is room? this is the thing. Instead of maybe putting those shopping bags, mm. uh, maybe it might be better uh, investing in even some smaller uh, bedroom. But, but uh, you, you know, I remember back in the day, if you were selling your house, I'd say put a, a soup on the stove. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Or that's coffee. Not, so it's the same yeah. kind of thing, I guess. We do, we do the coffee. You make a coffee pot oh, yeah. and they want the smell of coffee uh, in yeah. the, the room when people come to have a look. And it, it makes them feel relaxed, makes them feel homely, like they're in a cafe. And normally, if you ever notice when you see an open house, they've got a coffee uh, percolator there and a, a little container of biscuits and they give mm. them out to the people coming in. Makes you yeah. feel welcome. Jem, what do you think about this guy with his apartment in the last time? Oh, well, he's hopeful, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think it's happening across the Western world at the moment. I mean, people are... Gouging. Are, are gouging. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we're get, there's been post-pandemic, the, the post-pandemic gouge, whether it's the supermarkets... Everything. Everything. Yeah, everything. You know, yeah. and I mean, particular. I know here, and I'm sure it's the same over east, that... Um, Trying to get a rental or try, mm. even trying to buy a property at the moment. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's absolutely it's a, crazy. It's, so, it's and I think the same kind of thing's probably happening in the UK. So, mm. people are paying three to four hundred dollars more a week mm. just to secure accommodation, which is really sad. Ted, what do you reckon about this guy advertising falsely with his bags of uh, luxury? Well, is, well I, I'd like to know what were in the bags beforehand. <laughs> were, were they a, a catalogue on beds? <laughs> well, you would like to hope. So. Yes, you, you would. And you? would you take Take that bag with you into the car. <laughs> yeah, that, of course. And I'd and also put your take, mobile phone in. Yeah, and I'd fill up the coffee cup too. <laughs> yes, and take a biscuit with you. Well, I, it's feel, like, I, I feel like Pinterest would hmm. give him far better ideas when it mm. comes to what to do with those shopping bags to, to make it look like maybe put it in a nice frame and utilise it for the walls yep. rather than just placing it I wonder it if they were sponsored by the, the company well, that actually... Uh, maybe that's highly. why he can afford to shop at Chanel and yeah. yeah. these places Correct. because he's quite savvy when... <laughs> actually, you can get those designer shopping bags on yep. Etsy and oh. uh, on eBay. So People actually know. sell their shopping bags. Have you got any? I haven't, oh. but uh, I did dream one day of maybe making something with some bags I don't have. It's a great way. It's an image thing, isn't it? If you if you associate with great things, people are going to think you're great and uh, take your apartment because they want to feel a little bit of that luxury. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jen, what's your story? Okay, well, I'm talking about um, Lee Sales was invited to do the Andrew, uh, Andrew Ollie Media Lecture. Um, they this, do this every year. Yeah, they? they do this every year. And... Um, Andrew Ollie was a well-known journalist and, and a very good journalist mm. who, who passed away. And anyway, it was a really, it's, it's a long document. You can actually get it up on the ABC. But what she's talking about, that people are actually losing interest in the news. And she's sort of saying that journalists need to ask themselves some hard questions and news directors for that, mm. for that thing. Yeah. Personally, there's too much news and so much of it is bad news. Yep. Yeah. And we're moving away from, and, and Lee, Lee talks about this um, 
we're moving away from the respected journalists who you wouldn't know what their political views were. Mm. Uh, you wouldn't know their personal opinions on things, and and that sort of journalism is going by the by. Yeah, and I agree. Why, why, Jen? Why? I mean, I've noticed this too, because I mean, I work. I'm never been a journal. I'm a job. Yeah. But I work with a lot of journos in you know ABC commercial, mm. all that kind of stuff, and I too have seen this sort of like this: the story, the drama is more important yeah. than mm. the news. Yeah, <laughs> and and people are switching yeah. off yes, from it. Yes, they are. Yeah. You know, I think what news directors need to have a good hard look at themselves mm. because ultimately <coughs> they're the ones who are running newsrooms, whether it's a newspaper, whether it's but, but Jen, a television it, station. It, it, it doesn't help where you give prizes for people who ring in stories because all of a sudden someone rings in a story about an event and it has credibility and yeah. it gets a run. Where mm. at the ABC in my time, I'd say, hey, I just heard about a prang. And they'd say, oh, we'll wait till we get confirmation from the police yeah. before we run it. Mm. And so I think that's it. It's trying to be dramatic. Yeah, I agree. And you it's know what's something else I've noticed sorry. with news mediums as well? Have you noticed that something happens in the world, doesn't matter what it is, and it might be a slow news week, and it, this thing consumes the TV set for mm. the whole week or two weeks. And I'm not saying that those stories like the Gaza war and things like that aren't important, mm. but it's almost like that's all that's happening in our lives. And it is important. I, I'm not saying don't cover it, mm. but sometimes we become over obsessed with a topic and we lead with it every night on the news. And people are getting disillusioned. People are getting sick of negativity. Yeah. I think it's over because of COVID as well. Yeah. People haven't got the patience they used to. So when you give them stories that are factual and uh, sad in some cases, they don't want to see it. Yeah. They, they want to live in a fairy tale world. I yeah. also feel like on that flip side of yeah. it, social media and what's being put out there as yeah. well <clears throat> is changing it's more that new cycle do, as do, well. Do, do you Sorry. think some of the journalists, because I believe they are, are competing with social media and so we'll go totally. with uh, stories that may not necessarily be really mm. true to, to try and have a, a thing against the social media so they're going to be taken notice of. Well, mm. like, like Jen, a click, a click, clickbait kind of stories, I, absolutely. And yep. the other thing that I know, particularly when I read things online, is no one's work is edited these days. No. no. It's no. really sad. I mean, it it's doesn't it, it, it doesn't take much to have someone else read through a story and a good journo or a good subby will pick yeah, up yeah. pick mm. up a lot of errors. We, we and and there's to. just so much. There's, yeah. We're now becoming, celebrities are more important mm. Um, you know, people's opinions or a lot of journalists' yep. opinions. I don't want to know a journalist's political, um, mm. what their political sway is. Unless, I, correct. Um, unless they're an opinion, mm. yep. uh, you know, if you if you flick on Sky News <laughs> and you're watching one, the you know that you are, are watching a very yeah. right-winged yeah, um, yeah. editorial. Yeah. You know that. But then, um, but also... If you if you watch probably ABC, you're watching mm. a very left wing. You know, um, they tend to go with a more left wing. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Um, I'm, I'm yeah. not going to defend the ABC. I, 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 get, I get this touch of loyalty. Yeah. No, no, no. no. I think and, I'm going to hang on. But really, no. the ABC. You sh yeah, I shouldn't changed. be saying it's that changed. about the ABC. No. You know, the ABC should be political. down the line. As, oh, yeah. as, as, as it yeah. should be. I mean, I can't help it. I've just got this tremendously loyal thing about oh, the so, ABC. You know, oh, absolutely. And that's some amazing. It's yeah. I, I think they need to learn a few lessons of reality. Oh, they do. do they know, do. They're... Do you know what Ted and, and, and Jen and, and also Demelza? I think the ABC play is like Qantas. We love it. We love it. We all bag it, but mm. we love the ABC and we're honoured to have it as part yeah. of our yep. furniture, yeah. right? But I do believe the ABC has changed for whatever reason. I think governments have caused it to change because they've cut them back so far. They're an independent organisation supposed to be covering all the great news of the world, but yet then they cut them off so they haven't got the money to do it. Yeah. Mm. And yet we want them to be competitive. But hey, look, thank you for being on the Pleasure. show. Today. Thank so you. Sonia's telling me to wrap it up. So I guess uh, what we're telling news directors is lift their game. Is that right, Jen? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well stop stop doing the dramatic and stop so competing much. with social media because social media now can get a story out there straight away. Newspaper 
papers take a lot longer and so does television. But thank you to Demel Zelina, of thank course, you. from DL Social. Have yeah. a go news, of course, from you, Jen and Ted. As I say, you can be anywhere you like, even Mate, the ABC. Thank you. <laughs> Just a quick little bit of advice. Yep. If you're on the dummy with your phone, put your thumb over the camera. <laughs> and, and the other thing we forgot to say is do not... I know people who eat while they're on oh, the toilet. No. Oh, no! And I'm not no. I'm talking about no. eating biscuits no. or chips. No. No. There you go. Does Uber oh. deliver? No, no, no. Not oh. as fast as uh, something else on no. the toilet. But thank you very much to our team. To, uh, thank you for watching today, Australia. I hope you enjoyed the program. Next week's our last show for the year. I hope you can join us for that one. We're going to leave you today with a 15-year-old performer. Her name is Hayley Redditch. Her song is Can't Stop This Feeling. And uh, in the name of Ted, the, the feeling's passing. So I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. I got this feeling inside my bones It goes electric wavy when I'm turning on Don't need no reason, don't need control We fly so high, no ceiling when we're in our zone I got that sunshine in my pocket Got that good song in my feet Feel that hot blood in my body Drops. Oh, I can't take my eyes off it Moving so phenomenally You ruin my life the way we rock it So don't stop under the lights When everything goes Nowhere to hide when I'm getting you close When you move, well, you already know So just imagine, just imagine, just imagine Nothing I can see but you when you dance, dance, dance A feeling creeping up on you, so just dance, dance, dance Oh, all those things I shouldn't do but you dance, dance, dance And ain't nobody leaving soon, so keep dancing Can't stop the feeling So just dance, 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 can't stop the feeling Dance, 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 oh It's something magical It's in the air, it's in my blood, it's wishing on Don't need no reason, don't need control I fly so high, no ceiling when I'm in my zone I got that sunshine in my pocket Got that good soul in my feet Feel that hot blood in my body Drops. Oh, I can't take my eyes off it Moving so phenomenally You ruin my life the way we rock it So don't stop under the lights When everything goes Nowhere to hide when I'm getting you close When you move, well, you already know So just imagine, just imagine Imagine nothing I can see but you when you dance, dance, dance. A feeling creeping up on you, so just dance, dance, dance. And all those things I shouldn't do, but you dance. And ain't nobody leaving soon, so keep dancing. Can't stop the feeling. So just dance, dance, dance. Can't stop the feeling. Just dance, dance, dance Can't stop the, can't stop the oh, oh, nothing I can see but you When you dance, dance, dance A feeling creeping up on you So just dance, dance, dance And all those things I shouldn't do But you dance And ain't nobody leaving soon So keep dancing Can't stop the feeling so just dance, 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 can't stop the feeling So just dance, 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 can't stop the Can't stop the 